Hey guys, so today's video is going to be my Valentine's Day makeup tutorial for you. I asked about a week ago, about a week ago, if you would prefer to see a soft feminine makeup look for Valentine's Day or something more dramatic and glittery for Valentine's Day. And almost everybody said they wanted to see something soft and feminine but incorporating glitter. And I was like, oh, I like the way you think. So I immediately started thinking about a look I wanted to create for you. And I actually filmed this video for you on Sunday and I hated it. Like I loved the look, but when I put my footage under my computer, I was like, this is awful. <laughs> not good. Like I didn't know what the issue was, but I actually found out today that the issue was my camera settings. My camera settings were so out of whack because I was helping my sister shoot for her blog on Saturday and I didn't even think about the fact that the camera settings were completely changed. So the ISO was too high. I was shooting on the wrong mode. It was just a mess. Sorry. So anyways, I sat down today and I really like perfected the settings of my camera. So hopefully today's video is more on point than it's ever been. Fingers crossed. I'm actually glad I refilmed it though because I actually like this look better like now the second time that I did it because the first time I was kind of like we're just gonna wing it um but yeah I like this better now so I'm glad that I refilmed it for you guys so I'm much more happy with this so anyways for today's look I use a lot of baby pinks I really wanted to emphasize like the eyes in the sense I wanted to keep them nice and soft as far as the shadow went but I did add the glitter and then the lashes to make it like really flirty and girly and then the cheeks are very highlighted and baby pink just to really emphasize like the natural beauty and bring out like those kind of spring pastels I am so ready for spring makeup looks you guys you don't even know I am done with the dark I'm I'm done like I am so ready for spring trends I'm so excited to be doing like fun pops of color and springy looks I can't wait I'm so I'm so excited I feel like I usually am not that excited for spring because I am a fall and winter girl I love my dark colors but this year I'm like I can't wait anyways I am babbling keep in mind that this look is not just specific to Valentine's Day, you can wear this any day of the week you want. I personally feel like this is going to be one of my new go-to looks for days where I just want a little extra something-something, but I want to still keep my face looking kind of more neutral and natural, if you will. <laughs> so yeah, if you don't have a Valentine this Valentine's Day, don't feel bad. You can be my Valentine. I feel like I never had a Valentine really before John, which is not okay because I dated the same guy for three consecutive years. But I feel like we were just always like conveniently on a break, like whenever Valentine's Day would roll around. And I'm pretty sure that's just a cop out for him to not have to buy me chocolate or jewelry. Oh, the things I wish I could say to my 16 year old self. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop babbling now for real. I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And that's it. I love you guys and enjoy. Mwah. Bye. Good morning, everybody. For today's look, I'm going to be starting with my face. <laughs> Duh, where else are we going to start? Our butts. Anyways, so I'm going to be priming my skin using the Cover FX Illuminating Primer. And then for foundation, I'm going to be using the Make It Forever Ultra HD Foundation Stick. As you can see, <laughs> my body, my hands, my neck, everything is much darker than my face because I did recently get a spray tan and I did not spray my face because I just didn't want to dry it out. So I am using shade 123, even though technically my face is probably like a negative 13 right now. And I am using the Artiste Oval 8 brush just to blend this out. As you can see, I'm drawing the stick foundation onto the skin. And then I'm going to go in pretty much circular motions lightly over the face to blend this out. That's my favorite way to use this brush for application. And then I'm going to go in with concealer. I'm going to be using the Urban Decay Naked Weightless Skin Concealer. It is my fave right now. This is my all-time favorite concealer, just so everyone knows. Like, I have other ones that I love, but this takes the cake for me. It's number one. It really is weightless. It's hydrating. It doesn't crease. It doesn't settle. It's sheer. I love it. And then I'm going to go in with a very damp beauty blender and I'm going to just begin to tap that out because I put on so much concealer. My beauty blender, I made it really, really nice and damp. That way it didn't get cakey because the extra dampness will really help to absorb that. So now I'm going to go in with a lighter shade and this is the, I go in with like the light medium and this one is the light shade. And I'm going to take Take this and just draw a design in the center of my forehead, one line down the bridge of my nose. As you can see, the chin, the cupid's bow, and I'm going to make lines right there on my jowls, if you will. And then I'm going to just, again, with the damp beauty blender, go in and just blend this out. This is just going to be a way to kind of naturally highlight the face. If you want to bring highlight and depth to the face, it's a really good time to do it when you're working with your cream products because it can tend to look the most natural. 
Now I'm going to go in with the RCMA No Color Powder. I showed this in my most recent haul. And I'm going to grab a brush and just begin to dab this on my under eye area. As you can see, I'm doing a light application, nothing crazy. I'm not going to bake under my eyes or anything. I just want to set the under eye area. You do have to like shake it out and get it to the cap. That's my only complaint with this is that the packaging isn't amazing, but you get a ton of product and the product itself is amazing. I'm going to moisturize my lips really quickly because I do not want them to get dry since I'm going to be using a liquid lip today. And then I'm going to go in with the Kat Von D shade light eye palette. And I'm going to grab this peachy shade over here all the way on the right hand side. And I'm going to use a blending brush and just put that in the outer corner of the crease. I am using the Morphe M433 brush, but any blending brush that you have and you're comfortable with will do. I'm doing a light application and I'm going to remain on the outer corner. I don't want to cover my entire lid. I don't want to bring it to the inner corner. I just want to keep this kind of nice and light and natural and airy on the outer corner of the eye. Put the main intensity right by the lower lash line and then begin to blend upward towards the brow. As you can see, I'm staying in the crease right now and then I'm going to go a little bit higher as I don't have any product on my brush. Now I'm going to grab my Natasha Denona palette, which I absolutely love. And I'm going to grab the shade 6-4-V Shell. It's kind of a kind of a tongue twister. I'll put it down below for you guys. Um, I was trying to find a shade comparable to this one, but this is honestly just so beautiful and so unique. It's a gorgeous dusty rose shade. And with that same M433, I'm just going to put that right over top of that peach color just for more dimension. And it'll bring a little bit more depth in those pinky tones without looking like we have pink eye. And I'm not trying to be funny. I can tend to look like I have pink eye if I use the wrong shades of pink. That's why I love this shade because it's like that, that perfect, perfect dusty color. Now I'm filling in my brows and I'm using the new Anastasia Brow Definer. And as you can see, it is the easiest thing in the world. Like legit, this is it. That's how quick it is to fill in your brows. It's ridiculous. I'm going to go back in with the Kat Von D Shade Light Eye Palette and the MAC 242 brush. And I'm going to pack this white color on the inner corner of my eye. At first, it might look a little spooky. You're like, holy moly, this is white. But you will blend it out and then it'll look much better, especially once we continue the look. This really light white inner corner will just make everything look really feminine and girly and it'll really make your eyes stand out in a, quote, natural way. I'm doing the quotations with my fingers. Can you see it? Can you envision it? Okay. Now I'm going to highlight the brow bone using Mary Luminizer by The Balm. Oldie but a goodie highlight. I used to be diehard for this highlight and it's still a good one. So I'm going to use that just to put it right on the top of the brow bone just to bring a nice highlight that's a little subtle, not too intense. I'm going to go back with that same Natasha Denona shadow and I'm going to put it only on the outer half of the outer corner of my lower lash line. Woo, that was a tongue twister. But using any pencil brush, just go ahead and slap it on there. And then once you don't have as much product on the brush, kind of wrap it around, bring it down, blend it out, make sure it is not too harsh so it's nice and blended and light. Now we're gonna go in with MAC Reflex Pearl, and I'm also going to use some of the Lit Cosmetics Glitter Glue. I dip my brush in the glitter glue, I dip my brush in the glitter itself, and then I just begin to pack it on the lid. When I'm working with glitter, I do not swipe, I pack. So as you can see, I'm just going boop, 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 boop. You like that noise? Up and down and just packing the glitter on. If you swipe your brush like you would with a shadow, probably the glitter is going to fall down all over your cheeks or it's not going to apply the same. This is the best way to apply a glitter to get the maximum payoff and not have a ton of fallout. For lashes, I'm going to be using the Lily Lashes Galici Glam in NYC. First, I'm going to just coat my lashes with some mascara because this will make the lashes look much more natural. Just a little tip to go ahead and mascara the lashes first. And then I'm going to pop these babies on and make sure they are very nice and close and tight to the lash line. That way they look the most natural. Even though these lashes clearly aren't natural, you know what I mean. You don't want any gaps, especially since we didn't use any eyeliner. So you want to be nice and tight to your natural lashes. That's also why mascara helps. Then I'm going to go in with the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Powder in the shade Medium. And I'm going to just lightly dust this on the cheek. So I'm just going to put this kind of on the outer corner of the face. That way, like the bronzer, the contour, the blush, all that jazz goes on a little bit more smooth. And then I am going to be using MAC Shade Stir to Contour. I really wanted to use the new Makeup Geek powders, but I brought them to my house and I left them here. And since I am at my beauty space right now, <laughs> I couldn't use them yet, but I'll use them in the next video. 
So I'm just going to lightly sculpt out my cheeks. As you can see, blending up, I'm going to make sure that I really get the entire edge of my entire hairline. That's what's really important to me, I think, whenever I'm bronzing the face, is to make sure you get all around the hairline and then sculpt down on the cheekbones. Then I am going to just sculpt everything out, going back in with the same RCMA No Color Powder. And I'm going to let that harsh, intense line just sit there while I apply blush. I'm using the Urban Decay and Gwen Stefani blush palette. Look how pretty. And I'm going to go in with the shade Cherry, which is a really light kind of lavender baby pink. And I'm going to just lightly dust that on the cheeks right over that contour up towards the temple. These are super duper pigmented. I am loving these blushes. And then I'm going to just go in and blend out that harsh line. And as you will see, it's going to reveal like a really intense contour line. If you don't like it that intense, blend it out a little bit. But if you like it to be like that, girl, you're good to go. And then I'm going to apply mascara on the lower lashes, which as you can see, I'm super talented at doing that on camera. And then I'm going to grab the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette. The Morphe M501 brush, and I'm going to just lightly sweep this all over the cheekbones, kind of down on the apples of the cheeks, everywhere basically, because it's so natural and subtle. And then I will go in with Mary Luminizer by The Balm, and I'm going to use the Morphe fan brush that I raved about in my favorites, the M310, and I'm going to highlight specifically on the tops of the cheekbones. I like using that ambient lighting powder underneath though, because it gives a nice glow, but then this is like pow, right on top. You know what I'm saying? That's the noise I envision when I highlight, just so you know. Now for lips, I'm going to go in with Kylie Cosmetics Candy K Lip Liner. These lip liners are super creamy. As you can see how I'm applying them on camera, they just really glide on very easily. If you are someone who likes a more dry lip liner, kind of like the MAC lip pencils, you won't like this one. If you like a creamy lip pencil, this is going to be your best friend. It's a really, really, really nice formula. So I'm going to line my entire lips and I'm also going to fill my entire lips in. That way my lips are completely covered in the creamy lip liner. Then I'm going in with Coco K Liquid Lipstick, again by Kylie. My initial impression, I will say, is that these apply really beautifully, but most of them overall dry very flaky and tend to just kind of flake off on your lips. Coco K, on the other hand, did not give me any issues whatsoever. It lasted for over three hours beautifully. It was comfortable. At the same time, I did exfoliate my lips this morning in the shower. I also moisturized while I was doing my makeup, and I used a creamy lip liner. So that may be one of the reasons why Coco K worked so well for me, but I personally think that those steps are necessary in order to make these liquid lips comfortable. So yeah, that completes this video, you guys. I hope you enjoy this makeup look. Thank you so much for watching and have a happy Valentine's Day. Hey guys, why does this hand keep doing this? This one comes up normal and this one is like, the struggle is ridiculous. It's going to be on this Valentine. <sighs> Mother of Troy! So today's video is going to be this. Hey guys. Hey guys, so today. <laughs> oh, products to. <sighs> That's not okay. If you're with a man who doesn't buy you candy on Valentine's Day, you don't need that kind of negativity in your life. Just saying.